Let's take a look at the case of a defective coefficient matrix. So um, remember, recall that uh, a coefficient matrix is defective if it has a defective eigenvalue. So in other words, an eigenvalue for which the, um, uh, the dimension of the eigenspace is strictly less than the multiplicity of the eigenvalue itself. And then in this case, um, the eigenvalue itself is also called uh, defective. Um, and then also, if we have uh, a defective eigenvalue and an eigenvector for it, then a generalized eigenvector is a solution of the equation a minus lambda ix equals v. So remember, um, the, uh, the eigenvector v satisfies a minus lambda i times v equals 0. That's, what it, that's the definition of what it means to be an eigenvector. It's a non-trivial solution to this equation. Um, so that means that if we look at a minus lambda i squared applied to x, it's going to be a minus lambda i a minus lambda i x. And then this portion in green is actually equal to v by this equation right here. So <coughs> this becomes um, a minus lambda i v, which by this equation right here is going to be equal to 0. So it's not a solution of a minus lambda i x equals 0, but it is a solution of a minus lambda i x squared equals 0. OK, so that's a defective eigenvector. And so <coughs> in cases like this, we expect to um, find a solution that looks um, like this. Uh, so we'll have our original eigenvector e to the so we'll have e to the lambda t, and then t times our original eigenvector plus, and then our generalized eigenvector, I'll write with an eta. We expect to find a solution like this. OK, so let's look at an example. So suppose we want to solve uh, x prime equals 6 minus 8, 2 minus 2 x. All right, so then looking for uh, eigenvalues, determinant of a minus lambda i is going to be 6 minus lambda 2 minus 8 minus 2 minus lambda, which works out to be lambda minus 2 quantity squared. So you're going to have uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 both being equal to 2. And then you immediately know that it's going to be defective. Um, because when you row reduce a 2 by 2 matrix, you're not going to get two rows of zeros, not unless you started with the zero matrix itself. And you need a row of zeros for each free parameter, which means you need a row of zeros for each eigenvector, which means you can get at most one eigenvector, but we've got a multiplicity of two for this eigenvalue, so it's going to be defective. OK, so let's look for the um, eigenvectors, uh, or eigenvector, I guess. Um, so let's see. So we've got a minus lambda 1 i is going to be uh, 4 minus 8, 2 minus 4. And so this guy row reduces to 1 minus 2, 0, 0. And so I can take my v1 to be 2, 1. And um, so, so this gives us one solution, e to the 2t, two, 2, 1. Uh, but now we need to find our next one. So we look for a generalized eigenvector. And so uh, recall, we're, we're trying to solve a minus lambda i x equals this v1 that we just found in the, in the previous uh, step. So that means we're looking for um, 
So a minus lambda 1 we uh, had just a second ago. It's right here. So I've got uh, 4 minus 8, 2 minus 4, except now I'm augmenting it with v1 that, that I found um, just in the uh, previous step. And so I row reduce this guy and get 1 minus 2, 0, 0, uh, 1 half, 0. OK. And so then that tells me that I get vector um, 1 half, 0. And so now um, I expect my second solution to be e to the 2t. And then we have 1 half plus 2t and t. All right, so the general solution. Uh, is going to be C1 e to the 2t21 two two plus C2 um, <coughs> e to the 2t. And then we're going to have a t21 plus one half zero. And so it's kind of neat to notice that, uh, remember the repeated eigenvalue, that was the thing that led to resonance in, in previous situations. And that consequently uh, led to a solution that was going to be growing, um, like it had an extra factor of t in it. And, and so we see the exact same thing showing up here. OK. So. Yeah, there we go. That is our solution.